Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. You can join us for twice-monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, quilting book clubs, some other stuff, <laughs> podcasts, celebrity Sweet interviews. interviews. All that and more can be found at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by The Stitch TV Show Shop, <laughs> where we have patterns, branded show merchandise like t-shirts and mugs, laser cut applique kits, and more. Today we're going to be talking about bucket list quilts and walking foot quilting. We're joined by one of the quilts from our new Fillmore pattern and video class series. <gasps> So Fillmore is a beginner-friendly quilt that comes with 12 blocks and three layouts. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. So big news, we have our first video class. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what we're talking about in this part <laughs> until that came up. No, because this drops in early December. Yes, we will have a new yeah. video class by then. Yes, lots. Lots of work went into that. <laughs> yes. A lot did. of fabric. Lots of fabric. Lots of fabric. I did those some blocks. Some threads, some batting. Several times. I've sewn so many, this quilt so many times. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, we did three layouts. Yes. So you'll have your choice of different layouts. Um, this is the traditional um, layout. And we have two different pattern Color selections. We color did ways. A, yeah, we did a Pam version and we did my version. This happens, I know you guys will not expect me to say, but this is my version. <gasps> it's orange. Mine has zero orange. orange. Hers has zero. Hers is really good, though. I've, I, I like have it. sewn yours several times, too. <laughs> so I got to teach the classes, and um, what's really cool about the classes are we go through how to cut, how to sew, how to press, each block. It's very beginner friendly um, from, you know, rotary cutting tips, sewing tips, um, and me just talking to you about stuff. And, <laughs> and then at the end, There's I layouts. swoop in. She does. Talk about layouts. I would talk about qu choosing quilting designs, how to get back and forth between certain areas, some uh, suggestions for how to quilt the different layouts. So, um, Lynn mentioned this is the traditional layout. We'll show future layouts um, in, in upcoming upcoming episodes. Uh, there's a modern layout, and then there's my favorite, the U tried, because it only uses eight blocks out of the twelve. So if you really borked up a couple of them, pitch them out. Yeah, you can screw <laughs> up four. Yeah, you can hate two of them. Right. Screw up two, and you're still covered. And you still got it. Yeah, exactly. There was one Lynn it's wanted a, to throw out. I yes. <laughs> But that one's towards the end, so you have build up skills I until hate then. that block. <laughs> I didn't. I did, and you know Pam and I designed together, but we also designed separately under the stitch. So this is actually Pam's block of the month kind of program, and but I we both made it, so it it comes mm -hmm. from both of us. But definitely, I quilted this one. Yeah, I led to look at it twice. Yeah. Yes, I did. It was so long ago. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I did quilt it. Um, but you quilted some of them. I quilted, yeah, the other two. Because the other two right. examples are made in my colorway choices, which use the Pixie Dots fabric from QT Fabric. Hey, I, you know, hey. after we've we've developed the video class series and all this other kind of stuff, we've got a lot of extra blocks. What are we going to do with those? I don't know. Hmm. hmm. We may have to find something to do with them. Hmm. Wonder what that could be. Hmm. We'll have to think about it and let you all know. Like I, have, I totally just sprung that on I her. literally have zero idea what she's talking about if she's already got something in her head. No, like, I don't have anything okay, in my head. Good. I just know that I have got probably uh thirty six blocks. That's a lot of quilts. Or no, I've probably got more than that. I've probably got forty eight blocks. Holy moly. Of that's a lot of blocks. Yes, we made them a lot. Yeah, because I did a set and you did two sets and a set of these. So, yeah. 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 How about that? There you go. A lot of blocks. A lot of blocks. We're going to have to find something to do with them. <sighs> We're going to have to do a video class about what to do with blocks. <laughs> there you go. That may be a topic. To make more blocks. <laughs> make blocks. We've made blocks. Now we need to make quilts with those blocks. So, I don't know. What do you... Maybe we could put it together and... Well, I think we could auction one off at our guild or something mm -hmm. like that. Definitely put it to good use. That we'll put them to good use, or maybe we'll give away some. 
set of blocks that we've made. There you go. It, it's a it's a starter quilt set. It is. <laughs> like, we've done this part for you. You can do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So please, please, please go out there and check out our first video class. It's going to be great fun. Um, I think you'll learn a lot with just, you know, tips that on how to cut, how to press, mm -hmm. how to sew, just in how to do. And it's very beginner friendly. If you've not made a quilt before, this is a great quilt to start. So, so we'll uh, have a link to where to find the class in right. the show notes, both on YouTube and on our website. Right. But in the meantime, let's talk about bucket list quilts. Right. So again, bucket list is an American colloquialism for things you want to do before you die. Right. <laughs> like before you kick the bucket, which is American, another colloquialism yeah, for dying. Same, for dying. So things we want to do before we die. Because we like to punch people instead of talking about our feelings. So we come up with colorful phrases and analogies. <laughs> Who likes to punch people instead of talk about We're Americans. Oh, my god. We got gosh. one hand raised in the back. <laughs> Two. There we go. <laughs> Three out of five in this room. I would probably punch some people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to say right now, I'm not going to punch anybody instead of talking oh, about good. my feelings. Oh, it's good. Four of us got you covered. I'm going to talk about feelings. I mean, I'll probably I cry people. while I'm punching them. I will have feelings while doing it. Oh, my gosh. No. I'm not going to punch way. anybody. Bucket list. One, I would hurt myself, and that would be bad. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not saying it's going to end well. I'll be punched <laughs> right back. Like, it's not going to go well for me. Who do I think I am trying to punch somebody? No. No. <laughs> okay. Seriously. How do we get to this point sometimes? We're talking about quilts. We are. <laughs> Bunching people. How do these two relate? Like, so, I have no idea sometimes. <laughs> you know, maybe if you paid attention to what I said in the episodes, you know how we got here. <laughs> That's a little dingy callback to an earlier episode. That's two episodes ago, by the way. Is it? I thought it was just. I don't know. This one. is now. It's not this. <laughs> Bucket list. Oh my gosh. What quilts do you but want to make in the I'm future before you die? I'm surprised anybody's going to ever want to buy our class because seriously. I know the entertainment value is there. <laughs> it's there. It's educational. Do you remember fun. like a long time ago when people are like, have you ever been in an embarrassing video? Have you seen our show? <laughs> That's brand. We're in those all the time, twice a month at least. All right. So. Bucket list. Bucket list. Hit me with your first one. I know you're looking at my notes, and I've seen your notes. New York Beauty. You just did one. I'm still working on it, so See, it's fine. not done yet. But I've always wanted to do one. How many blocks are you going to do for that one? Um, Because that was good old episode 405. That was like three or four episodes ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Back in time. Um, <laughs> I don't know yet. And hopefully I'll have more done by the, by now by now than I did. <laughs> We're gonna go back to the future. We're gonna go back. We need a DeLorean quick stat. Um, flux capacitor is getting flux overwhelmed. Flux capacitor. <laughs> okay, New York Beauty. I have done four blocks and put them in a mini quilt, and I let my cat sleep on it. So. And you're like, and I'm done. done. No, I liked it. I like yours. I'm not as brave with my color and pattern choices, which is why on a future episode we have. Tips for working with prints as a topic because I need help. <laughs> I'm kind of of put all the prints in there and see what happens. So there you go. That's my tip. Put them all in. See what goes down. There you go. What if you don't like it? You just keep putting more in. It'll happen. What You'll if you like punch it. it? That's a totally different thing. <laughs> You're being told to reel it in. Okay. Um <laughs> Why am I being told I don't to reel it in? She's telling you to reel it in on the fabric choices, or oh. we just need to bring it back on. Oh, like, topic, 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 bucket of, list. I was talking about the New York Beauty. I know, when I asked you about color choices. I know. I think you just put all the prints in. Now, New York Beauty, how big am I going to make it? Is what you asked me. So yes. I think those are pretty good size blocks. I think they are twelve inch blocks. Twelve yeah. inch. So I'm I'm at least going to make a queen size quilt, if not a king. Okay. There you go. Have fun with that. I know I will. Cool. It's one of those 
if I'm making a quilt for myself, and I know last episode we talked about making it for other people, Mm -hmm. but if I'm making a quilt for myself, I want my best work in it, period. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to make something I'm going to be in love with and use. So I've always wanted a New York beauty quilt. It will go on a bed in my house. If it goes in our bedroom, that's king size. If it goes in a guest bedroom, that's queen. So it'll be one of those two sizes. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and I'll probably do something, you know, I probably won't put borders on it or anything because it'll be big enough with just those blocks. Yeah. So, okay. so it'll be a big quilt kind of thing. And it's paper piece, so that's crazy. It's a lot of stuff. And I'm going to try to use the most fabrics I can use. All of the fabrics. All the fabrics. Awesome. I got to justify the stash somehow. So keep using fabrics from it. That helps. Yeah. There you go. Totally and then you helps. can buy more. So that's one of mine. What's one of your bucket list quilts? So I have one on mine, but I don't know if it's because I'm caught up in other people's feelings or because I actually want to do it. But I have listed a Dear Jane quilt. And what I think I mean oh, by that is... That's a good quilt. I would like to see myself commit to a project of that intricacy and size to completion because I started like the farmer's wife quilt and I got 25 blocks and I was like, I'm good. And we're <laughs> and done. I turned it into a baby quilt and handed it off like, yeah, I'm done. Dear Jane is very challenging. So you're talking about doing the whole, like, all the little wedgie things, the wedgie things the on the sides. Yeah. Got to pull on the binding topic we talked about with yes, the bias with binding the and the scallops. That's a big quilt. That's a big commitment. It's a big commitment. I have seen those Dear Jane quilts done extremely well. Like right. I've seen them, and that's if I, I do it. The I'm, primitive colorings not my jam is not my jam, but I have seen them done in like a rainbow oh, and yeah. like a red and white, and a, I think I've seen a blue and white one. Yeah, that were gorgeous, but they are a lot of work, and some of the squares are six inches. They all are. I think they're all six inch blocks. Yeah, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I've that's not why seen, have you seen the original live and in person? It's in I have not, no. Is it's it in, in the north no 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 no. I think it's in the northeast somewhere. Okay. I could be wrong. You all tell us if I'm wrong. I think it's in the northeast. United States. Of the United Yeah. I mean <laughs> oh, it's in one of the New England states. I gotcha. want to say Massachusetts or New I don't think it's in New York. Up there. Okay. We are from the South, and I will tell you that all of those states blend together in my head. It's, it still takes me a while to remember if New York State is north or south of Massachusetts. Because I'm like, wait. It's north, isn't it? We're not getting into this right now. <laughs> we're going to reel it back in. So, dear Jane. Dear Jane. I might, I might instead switch that and be like, oh, I would rather stick to something like the city sampler that Tula Pink put out. Where oh, it's, that'd be You know, I could see doing that and, I don't know. So, it's some kind of intricate sampler quilt where I have to commit we to the We should thing. make an intricate sampler quilt. Oh, no. That's a great idea. We should make one. Don't and write then that, that down. will be on our bucket list. Don't write, write that, that down. Don't we write that down. We should make one. You have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we could be like the dear Lynn and Pam. It could be a thing. It's not a thing. It so could be a thing. We could should be make one. Not going to be a thing. <laughs> mm. Now that I'm thinking about it, we'll see. All right. All so, right, what's next on your list? Um, pickle dish. I hate pickles. <laughs> <laughs> Which and has, I hate super specific um, crockware. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Crockery, crockware. What's the right term there? I don't know. Um, Dishes. Okay. Well. <laughs> Pickle dish <laughs> is a double wedding ring type of quilt. With teeth. With the arcs have little <laughs> teeth in them. See? And they're super cute. I love the pickle dish quilts. They are cute. I still have And pickles. I'm not done one, so I want to do Why that. Why is it called pickle dish, though? Do we know the I don't know. origin? The etymology? I, I do not know the etymology of it. <laughs> so I can't tell you. I know that that's what it is, but I don't know why it's called that. And this pattern has been out for a long time. It could have been called something else prior to Pickle Dish. But it is called Pickle Dish, I know. But I think they're cute. I, I've always wanted mm-hmm. one. So I haven't done that one. Those are my two. 
major ones. I could be talked into other ones. Oh, yeah. You can be talked into anything. <laughs> That's not Look true. Look right now. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a great idea. Like, we should totally do this. That's I, not true. So what's your other? My Would other you, one. Do you only have two? I only put two on here. I think I only put two also because quilts take so long. It's true. I I put apple core. Really? Yeah. Well, I've like I've done the clamshell thing now a couple times, and I'm like I haven't done not, a clamshell. That scary. should go on here. That I need to go on there. I need Who's a clamshell. We got a pin. <laughs> got to put clamshell down. <laughs> I can hook you up with some templates. I'm good. Okay. So I think apple core would be fun. And I would want to do, like, fun prints. Well, good, because boring prints are not fun. I know. Like, why would you want to do boring prints? But I tend to only have boring prints. I don't tend to buy fun prints because I'm like, I don't know what to do with these. So that oh. is, like, the apple core to me is not just, oh, I want to conquer that shape because, like, I can so curve. But, I like, oh, I want to conquer the arrangement of the fabric to make it look super cute. Oh, That's what I really want to do with it. Ah, so fabric placement instead of necessarily yes. the shapes. Okay, yes. so apple core. Apple core. All right. I need to do a clamshell. I need to add to my list. I like the clamshell idea. Make a note. You know, this isn't a pattern that I want to actually do, but I do think that I need to conquer my having not hand quilted a quilt. So I think I just ordered some new templates for my next hand piecing project, and I think I'm going to hand quilt it. Of course, now talk to me after it's all pieced, and I may be like, this is going on the long arm. <laughs> but I think I should hand quilt something. Are you going to get a golden thimble for it at our guild? No, because I never turn those in. <laughs> I don't. I I. And, okay, so, and I don't know if this is just me, but I don't enjoy show. I love seeing everybody else's. I don't enjoy showing my work at Guild. Why? I don't know. I just, you know I rarely bring anything. I just figure it's because you usually forget. That's what or I'm going with. Or you don't finish stuff. <laughs> so it's got a lot of stuff in progress. I do And we lot. finish more stuff when it's related to the stitch, but... I just don't, yeah, I don't like, I don't show my stuff at Guild very often. That's weird. I know, I'm weird. I got a problem. But you're hanging in a show. Oh, yeah. Is it just because you're not right there next to it? Yeah, probably. Probably. All right, so I probably need some therapy. I'll contact some people. Okay. I got a guy. <laughs> no, I got people. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so I, do, I don't know. So I think I need to hand quilt something. Okay. And I, if how, I do How come it, your list just doubled? Because I like talking about this kind of stuff. Her list just doubled. So I'm going to hand quilt something. I'm going to make a pickle dish, New York Beauty, and a clam. All right, those are my four. What we you... should check back here like in a year from now. Oh, girl, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and see if we've done any of these. You could get an apple core done in a year. Yeah, I could. It's getting close to like, you know, resolution time. When this drops. I look forward to not doing heroin again. <laughs> That's a callback to, like, season two? <laughs> yes. Season one? Season Probably. two? People are not going to get that. <laughs> They're going to have to go back and watch that. All right. That's that's funny. Go. So All right. Well, now we're going to take a look, closer look at the Fillmore quilt, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and now we're going to talk about walking foot quilting. First of all, Lynn, what is a walking foot? Walking foot is, this is my Bernina walking foot, and what it does is it has these teeth that are on the top of the foot that mimic your um, lower feed dogs so that you have an even feed through your machine. So what it's doing is it's grabbing the top and the bottom fabric at the same time and pulling it back. We'll immortalize that in a GIF. <laughs> I do it with like this. You're doing it like this. I know. I have implied groupiness in my hands. She's like Spider-Man. Yes. I 
spin a wicked web. Sticky. So uh, it can be known by other names. So walking foot is common. They're also known as even feed. Yes. Feet. For my particular brand of machine, I have a Janome. There is a built-in walking foot system called the AccuFeed. So um, there are universal feet that work for, I know, low shank uh, machines. I think they're similar for high shank machines. Um, and then for ones like mine or yours where they, the foot is specific to the machine, uh, because mine, the motion is built into, you know, when that foot is attached and I engage a certain uh, mechanism. So it's helpful when you're, when you're first starting out quilting and you're not quite feeling like you want to try free motion quilting, walking foot's where a lot of people start. Um, and a lot of people honestly start trying to quilt with just the regular foot that they use to piece, which can cause issues because regular sewing machine feet don't have the grip on the t on the bottom of the presser foot. So sometimes that can push the fabric while the feed dogs are pulling this. And that's how you get wrinkles a lot of times mm -hmm. um, as you're getting like towards the edge of something, particularly when you're going to cross over lines. When you get to a line of stitching and you're stitching this way and the fabric starts to like buckle up and over. So walking foot will definitely help with that. And now the other trick, my machine has an adjustment because it's a built-in AccuFeed system. I can tell it to feed the top foot a little more or a little less. Oh, that's cool. If there's like cool. extra bunching or... I don't know or, that mine does that, but I don't... I, I have quilted a quilt with a walking foot. Yeah. Now, one I mean, of my first quilts. So, I mean, it makes sense that yeah. that's what... In fact, I used to piece with my walking foot instead of using my quarter inch foot. When I first started piecing, mm -hmm. I was using my walking foot, which I think is very common for new beginner quilters. I do have a quarter inch walking foot oh, for do you mine. Really? Yeah, it's just got a little guide built into it. Um, but I don't use it that often. The only time I've used it really was when I was piecing minky fabric. Oh yeah, that's because helpful. Because that, that can shift quite a bit. There's a lot of bulk there. Yeah. Um, now, something, if you have, um, a high, uh, not necessarily a higher end machine, but more than just like a, a base level machine. Lots of times they have foot pressure. Yes. And on walking foot, you want to experiment to see. Normally, I sew with you know full foot pressure, but I can lessen that. So that means it's it's not pressing down as much um, when it's hitting the fabric. And I find that lessening that sometimes on walking foot helps avoid some of that buckling of the fabric when you well, get well, and you're leaving overlines. room for the batting and backing. Yes. So I mean that makes it bulkier. Yes. So you don't need as much pressure. You need that to move through smoothly. Yeah, especially right. if you have pressed all of your blocks to one side or you just have a lot of seams. Right. Um, you definitely want to look at lowering your foot pressure there. That will definitely help. Yes. Now, at my first quilt, I did a king size and I used a walking foot. And I did straight, mm -hmm. straight lines. Straight lines. That's it. Now, I will say, I try straight lines in my walking foot and they still come out waving. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that bad. to be true. <laughs> and I wonder, too, if it's because I have cats jumping up and things could getting be. jostled. That could be. That <laughs> could be it. Could be it. Could be the reason. Um, have you ever used a decorative stitch on your walking foot to do, like, small pieces? I have not. I honestly, I had to go dig to find the walking foot because it is not in my top whatever feet that I use. And... I think after I kind of graduated from using a walking foot to piece to using a normal, you know, quarter inch foot um, or an open toe embroidery foot mm. that I use for applique, honestly, those are the two feet that I use the most now. My open toe embroidery, my quarter inch foot, and then I use an em a hopping foot or an em like a darning foot. darning foot every once in a while if I'm quilting. Yeah. But I don't use a walking foot anymore. But I know that there are tons of techniques out there, and I know there are people who write, write books about oh, yeah. how to quilt with walking feet with different— Yeah, Leah Day just had a book come out um, ah, about okay. walking foot quilting. And yeah. I think she goes into even specialty Didn't stitches. did Jackie and... Gehring do that, too? I think Jackie think Gehring so. did a book with that, too, with different walking foot. Does Krista— um, She has done it some. I don't know if she's got a whole book dedicated to it, but she does talk about— Right. Um, designs and, and how to use that. And she's done tutorials on her website as well. That's Krista Watson. Right. Um, so, you know, it's it's one of those techniques that's good for when you're first starting out. Um, and I know a lot of people that even as experienced quilters go back to it and make use of it. Well, there are some quilts that you need straight lines. Yeah. I will say if you do our droid pattern, it looks best with straight lines. Yeah. 
It really does. Um, so it, there's nothing wrong with using it. And if I had to quilt, if I didn't have the long arm and I needed to quilt, I would be using the walking foot a lot more than I currently do. Yeah. It's, but but it, the long arm changes that for me. Yeah. It's pretty common when you're, if you're in the habit of stitching in the ditch around your piecing, mm -hmm. lots of times that's done via walking foot. Um, my only problem with that is the, the seeing it. You know, the walking right. foot's got a lot of stuff going on and it, it's not as easy to see where the needles yeah, are. Yeah, it's a little more crowded around the visibility where the needle is. is yeah. yeah, of knowing exactly where that needle is going, right? So, but I think it's a great technique, and and it does help move that quilt. Because I was doing it on a king size with you know a big cotton bat, and yeah, those are heavy. Now, when you those are heavy, were doing it, did you think about changing your stitch length at all? I don't think I knew enough at the time. Yeah. I think I just had whatever the yeah. default stitch length, which I had a Bernina, was probably 2.5. And that's probably the stitch length that I yeah, used. Yeah, my default stitch length for piecing is 2.2, .2, which is millimeters. Um, and then when I do walking foot quilting, I tend to bump it up to 2.5. Sometimes I even go up to like 2.8. Oh, okay. Almost like a three. It just kind of depends on the look that I want uh, and what it's being used for. Right. But I will say that um, I didn't change it, so it was probably a 2.5. And it was much easier to pull that mm -hmm. through than when you didn't have it on. Yeah, because it helps grip and pull the fabric through right. as opposed to exactly. trying to glide. Yeah. And I didn't have, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so I didn't know that you needed to have lots of table room. And I was doing a king size quilt and... Like, it really felt like quilt wrestling in a lot of ways. Yeah. It, yeah. Trying to do a king size on a domestic will feel like that. It's still do totally doable. Totally doable. You're going to need to take a lot of breaks. Exactly. Exactly. It's just like this big, bulky quilt. I still have that quilt somewhere. I think it's in our bedroom. Hmm. Under other quilts. It's not, it doesn't rotate out as much. It's a Christmas quilt, too. I need to give it away. Because I don't use it. So it's a rag quilt. Yeah. One of those. Do you remember those? Those rag quilts? Like made with flannel or just general cotton? Just general cotton. Yeah. yeah. So that was my first quilt, a big rag quilt. Well, one of my first quilts. I have a lot of firsts. I know. That makes sense. It does not. It does in my brain. <laughs> a lot of things make sense in my brain that don't make sense other places. But I do like the walking foot. I yeah. just don't use it very often. I, think I did have to go dig it. A lot of the yeah. tips that we talked about a few episodes ago about free motion quilting on domestic and quilting large quilts apply here. So managing the bulk of the quilt that's not going through right under the needle. So whether you're flinging it over your or shoulder, shoulder or you're puddling it in your lap or and make sure you've got support for it on the back. Yeah. Um, because all that's going to help take and alleviate some of that weight and prevent like weird long stitches or some skip stitches. Well, where I got into trouble with mine was... I used to quilt in a closet. <laughs> this is my surprise face. My, I was in a guest bedroom, and I had the quilting table in a closet that you could close the doors to. So you would just open up the doors, and there was my sewing machine instead of a normal closet because it was in a guest bedroom. So there wasn't very much space behind my sewing machine. There was like this much space behind my sewing machine. Just enough for the quilt to fall down. Yeah. And so that made it more, and you had a king size quilt being crunched into that. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> that was not a, I since don't do that. Yes. I've come out of the closet. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> I know. I totally didn't plan that either. But that's my, it was a great way to hide your. Well, particularly if you have young kids, pets that get into stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a good solution. Yeah. So I had the closet built where, you know, it had shelves on the inside because it was longer. But the the table the, that the machine sat down in was fit right in that space. And you could close the doors and it'd be perfect. It was great. It worked out well. 
except for when you quilted a king size quilt, and then it was not happy camper. But the walking felt was very helpful. Yes. So, do um, you free mo? Can you free motion with it? I have never tried. I someone asked us that, aka production staff, and I haven't tried either, so I don't know. Like, it doesn't make sense to me because you have to drop feed dogs, and then you've got feed dogs essentially on top. That See, I need stuff. I, I don't, don't drop my feed dogs when I do my domestic. I merely sh set the stitch length to zero. Really? Yes. I dropped the feed dogs. I used to, and then I ran into trouble where they wouldn't come back up. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the set it to zero and then back up to 2.2 where it's fine. <laughs> That makes sense. So it just doesn't move. Does it do this? Yeah, at they all? just kind of go up and down a little bit, but not enough to create drag as I'm trying to like feed free motion through. And that's on your domestic, domestic. not on your. My, yeah, my Sweet 16 doesn't have feed, feed dogs. dogs. Just not built with them. Yeah, mine are. Yeah, the long arm isn't either. Well, that's funny. Hmm, is it? Yes, it is. Because I didn't. Know. Well, serious about quilting. <laughs> So, 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 is your walking foot quilting more Marsha fabulous or Oliver irritating? <laughs> you can let us know. You can leave a comment on the blog or the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by the Stitch TV Show Shop, your place for quilt patterns, the Stitch TV Show merchandise, and laser cut applique kits. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce The Stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube to know immediately when a new episode drops. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, December 14th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club is January 25th. <gasps> Two days before my birthday. It's my mom's birthday. Oh. And my podcast, Hip to be a Square, will be out Fridays or Saturdays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.